Are you dreaming of owning your cozy townhouse in a typical Spanish village? Maybe a romantic finca or cortijo in the countryside? Or luxury apartment on the coast for your own holiday and maybe for rental? If you have serious plans to turn this dream into reality, remember that the Spanish buying process looks quite different than in Northern Europe. And you have to deal with a different language, laws and customs. Since this financial investment is likely to be one of the biggest in your life, you would do well and watch this video with 10 legal tips for a problem-free, stress-free and, above all, safe purchase. After all, these of course have a quite different perspective than the sales information of your real estate agent. My name is Ariana van Wijk and in 2006 I emigrated to sunny Andalusia. Since 2013 I enjoy working in a Spanish law firm specialized in real estate and inheritance law. And in this job I assist mainly foreign clients. Also I have bought a house myself twice, so I speak both from professional and personal experience and therefore know exactly which problems and cultural differences foreign buyers encounter in Spain. In this video and on my website liveinandalusia.com I give general information. Every Spanish purchase, however, always requires an individual legal assessment based on the documentation and the current registrations additional information from external parties such as government agencies, the town hall and often an architect, as well as the individual circumstances and wishes of the buyer and seller. It's good to know the most important points in which the Spanish process is different from what you're probably used to. First of all, the Spanish notary and real estate agent have a more limited role in the process and are not concerned with the legality of the house, any potential debts or the various payments during the process. That is why it's common to hire a lawyer or a solicitor who conducts a legal investigation and represents you during the process from the reservation until the final balance meeting. Secondly, in Spain, you have to deal with two separate authorities for registering real estate, the land registry and the cadastre. These have different functions and often their data does not match, especially in rural areas. Your lawyer should assess whether any changes are necessary before, during or after the purchase. Thirdly, the 17 autonomous states within Spain each have their own laws, taxes and institutions. Therefore, several concepts in this video relate specifically to Andalusia, such as the DAFO certificate in the countryside, uh, the RTA rental license or the ITP transfer tax. Many potential clients contact our law firm with the happy news that they have bought a house and now need a lawyer. When in reality, they only mean that they have reached a verbal price agreement. However, realize that the house is not yours until the purchase deeds at the notary have been signed. Neither the reservation contract nor the private purchase contract can oblige anybody to buy or sell a house. Nevertheless, you can lose your amounts uh, paid up to that point, miss out on your dream home or end up buying a house with legal problems or debts. There are many anxious buyers who will sign any contract or even title deeds uh, for a sale that are shoved under their nose without even a doubt, which obviously is not wise. On the other hand, there are also people who are too scared 
by wild cowboy stories on the internet and that's not necessary either. Surely you can safely buy a house in Spain as long as you know what you're doing. So just take some time to watch this important video to the end to be aware of all aspects in the buying process that you need to pay attention to. On liveinandalusia.com you can then find more detailed information about every subject and the various links you can find below in the description. By the way, if you are appreciating this video and the information I'm giving you about the Spanish purchase process, then of course I would be very happy if you could push like below. Tip number one, hire a specialized and independent lawyer. The only professional who can correctly interpret the information and documentation of a property is a lawyer with experience in real estate law and therefore not the real estate agent nor a gestor who is like an accountant. So please do not try to save on these legal fees. If there are things really wrong with your purchase then your financial loss will be way worse. Incidentally, this does not only apply to rural areas, as people sometimes think, but certainly also to houses within urban areas. Unlike being a real estate agent, being a lawyer is a protected profession and the lawyer must always have his license and mandatory liability insurance. He therefore has a professional responsibility, but despite of that, I would always recommend that you find your own independent lawyer yourself. So don't go with the lawyer that is recommended to you by your real estate agent as he is not independent. In addition to being safe, hiring a lawyer is also very practical. Because if you issue a power of attorney through a notary, you do not have to be present in Spain during the process. Your lawyer calculates all costs and taxes and gives you tax advice so you can determine your exact buying budget. He checks the agent's reservation contract if desired and handles all payments during the process. Also, he provides all kinds of extra services with third parties on behalf of his clients, such as applying for the NIE tax number, opening a bank account, applying for a mortgage, evaluation, a structural survey, a topographical report, rental license, and so on. However, the most crucial task of the lawyer is to carry out the legal investigation into the legality and debts. For this, he assesses all documents. He has contact with the relevant authorities, such as the land registry, cadaster, town hall, tax authorities, and so on. And he assesses whether additional deeds need to be signed. He negotiates secondary buying conditions with a seller. And this he often has an added value due to his experience and knowledge. If there is a green light after his investigation, he will draw up an extended private purchase contract to guarantee your 10% down payment until the real purchase at the notary. During completion, your lawyer ensures that all deeds are signed correctly and according to the previous agreements, such uh, as the deeds of sale, uh, but also mortgage deeds, new built declaration, country border corrections, and so on. Then after the purchase, he finally takes care of all tax payments, the conversion of registrations, the service contracts and direct debits, uh, and also the balance of retentions with the seller. Uh, and on top of that, he gives personal advice on a potential will and Spanish inheritance law. The fees for your legal representation usually are 1% plus VAT of the purchase price. If you would like to receive an example offer of the total buyer costs of a purchase within Andalusia, these are approximately about 12%, please just send me an email with your budget. 
Tip number two, find your own real estate agent. In the province of Malaga, on the Costa del Sol, the buyers usually don't pay any real estate commission. The seller, on the other hand, pays 5% plus VAT. And if there are two different agents involved, they just share the commission. It's therefore wise that you find your own good purchase agent who represents your interests. An experienced real estate agent knows the local market, knows the prices, and he has already seen many houses from the inside, which saves you a lot of time. Keep in mind that he will initially try to sell you houses from his own portfolio, of course, because of the double commission. But besides of this, he can show you basically any house that's on the market. It's however important that you don't contact the selling agent yourself, because in that case you are immediately registered and you put your own agent aside in terms of his commission. Once you have found your dream home and have agreed on a verbal price, then a reservation contract needs to be signed as soon as possible to take the house off the market for a few weeks during the first part of the legal investigation. It's wise to have the contract checked or corrected by your lawyer. For example, that the house must be correctly registered in the land registry and cadaster, debt free and without tenants or occupants. And of course, preferably only pay the reservation fee of three to six thousand euros after both signatures have been placed. So the reservation contract is only a quick and short contract of usually about one and a half pages with the details of both parties, uh, the property, the price, the reservation sum, and at least one deadline. If necessary, short clauses can be included, such as price including furniture, subject to mortgage, or include, uh, including DAFO costs in the countryside. A reservation in which the seller takes on the same financial risks as the buyer is called a contrato de arras. But from a legal point of view, this actually already is a kind of private purchase contract, which you normally sign with the 10% down payment. If the seller has his own lawyer, then the real estate agent from that moment of signing only has to take care of the furniture list and the final inspection of the property. Through the opinions of our many foreign clients, I know that there are very professional agents with a lot of added value. But unfortunately, there are also really bad ones. So always check whether you find enough positive external references. See whether the area matches and if the contact goes pleasantly. There are agents with a professional license but this in Spain plays a lesser role. If you would like to have a reference for a good real estate agent in the province of Malaga or Granada, based on area, language or specialty, please just send me an email. Tip number three. Negotiate the DAFO costs for rural properties. If you are planning to buy a countryside house, a cortijo or a finca uh, within Andalusia, then take into account that these have a different legal status. And because in principle, the Junta de Andalucía does not allow building, reforming or renovating in Rustico. So not digging a swimming pool, expanding a garage, uh, constructing terraces or brick outdoor kitchens uh, and so on. You will not receive a building permit uh, for this and changes can easily be demonstrated through aerial photos. Illegal indoor renovations are more difficult to prove for the authorities, but if you get the police on your doorstep because your neighbors complain about the noise, then you do really get a legal 
case against you. However, because in recent decades a lot has been built in the countryside in Andalusia, and the town halls often had an active role in this, the junta has drawn a line under this practice, and buildings of six years and older are now officially tolerated when it comes to normal countryside. It's therefore no longer possible to have legal proceedings involving mandatory demolition and a fine of 70% of the new construction value. If you buy in protected nature area, the calculation is usually made back from the protection dates and new illegal buildings never expire. For a few years now, it has been possible to get the current legal situation on paper by the town hall through a DAFO certificate. It's not mandatory to buy or sell with a DAFO, but sooner or later you will have to face these costs. And these, these are easily about six to 12,000 euros. The advice therefore is to negotiate that the seller pays this uh, and you agree a price including DAFO costs in the countryside. Because the DAFO procedure takes longer than the purchase process, the lawyer checks any potential risks and deducts the estimated costs from the sales price. And he settles the balance with the seller later. So the DAFO certificate from the town hall states in black and white that all buildings are old enough, but also that there are no legal proceedings against the property and that the surface facilities are according to regulations, like the electricity and the water, which is often an issue in the countryside, and also the obliged septic tank. In addition, with a DAFO certificate, you can apply for small building licenses in the context of hygiene, safety, and livability. The exact interpretation of this depends in the end on the town hall's architect. For your information, even if your house already has a DAFO, the lawyer still has to check everything again. And also the certificate uh, does not guarantee that the registrations in the land registry and in the cadastre uh, are correct. This means that the legal investigation of the lawyers will therefore always be necessary. Tip number four. Check your first occupation license for RTA rental. Do you want to rent out your new Andalusian home to tourists? Uh, start a B&B maybe? Or just rent out a few rooms? Well, in that case, you need a RTA rental license from the Registro de Turismo de Andalucía. With the corresponding RTA number, you can register on the well-known rental websites. There is a list of practical conditions that you must meet, such as having a fire extinguisher, a first aid kit and official complaints forms. The registry conducts announced inspections and the profit of your rental must be declared through the IRNR income tax for non-fiscal residents in Spain. This is about 19% or through the normal IRPF. Also, guests must be registered through the platform of the police within 24 hours of arrival, just like with hotels. If you want to rent out an urban property to uh, tourists, so this means less than two months at once, then you are required to have the first occupation license, or in Spanish, the Licencia de Primera Ocupación, or the LPO. For older homes, the buyer often still needs to apply for this, because the LPO only became mandatory uh, in the 80s and this license is not a legal requirement when selling. Ask your lawyer for the costs if you still need to get this license because these 
can't be accounted for by the seller. However, if your house does not meet the current technical requirements of the town hall, for example, if there's no individual water contract in a building, then you may not apply for a first occupation license and therefore indirectly you can't rent out to tourists. So if rental is crucial for your purchase and you buy an older urban property or apartment, then you can possibly hire an architect to check this issue with the town hall. There are over 30 different kinds of RTA rental licenses. And there are specific rules in the countryside that you need to know if you, for example, want to start a B&B &B with breakfast or a casa rural. I recommend that you check with your lawyer if these special rules apply to you. In addition, it's important to know that uh, applying for a business opening license is a long expensive procedure of which you can't get any guarantees before you purchase. Also, I have two more tips when you rent out your property. Check whether your liability insurance needs to be expended for commercial rental and also have your lawyer check with the community of owners, that's the Comunidad de Propietarios, where there are any specific restrictions regarding renting out your property. Legal tip number five. Count with six to eight weeks for the binding mortgage offer of the bank. Since the law changed in 2019, the Spanish mortgage process takes significantly longer and this causes problems now with the parallel purchase process. Many sellers are willing to sign a reservation contract subject to mortgage, but not the private purchase contracts. However, the reservation usually only is valid for two to four weeks, while the binding mortgage offer, the fine document, quickly takes about six to eight weeks to be issued by the bank. So, that is a risk if your bank manager promises you certain conditions, but the risk department, after all, rejects your application. My advice, therefore, is to try to negotiate a reservation contract subject to mortgage for six to eight weeks. In addition, make sure that you request your NIE tax number as early as possible in the process because this involves long waiting times at the police and the risk department of the bank does not start the assessment without this number. For your information, the FAIM offer remains valid for three months and evaluation for six months. Your lawyer can take care of the entire mortgage applications on your behalf up to the signing of the mortgage deeds uh, itself during the purchase at the notary. Also, he will inform you about all conditions such as interest rates, discount points for secondary projects uh, such as uh, the insurance, commissions for opening or for early cancellations, etc. How much mortgage capital you can get depends on five factors. One, you can spend about 30% of your last net uh, annual income on housing costs and debts, both in Spain and in your own country. It's therefore very important that you don't quit your job before you apply for the mortgage. Two, the valuation or taxation is done by an official valuation company. And keep in mind, that the amounts usually are lower than the market value, especially in rural areas. Sometimes the valuation may also include additional legal requirements. Three, if you are a fiscal resident in Spain, you usually can get a maximum of 80% of financing over the valuation. And otherwise it's up to 70%. Four, 
Spanish banks also look at the type of house that it concerns. And not all banks give a mortgage in rural areas or specifically protected nature areas. If they do, the percentage is also often at least 10% lower. Five, the risk department of the bank does not only look at the situation of the house and the person applying for the mortgage, but of course also at its internal targets. Tip number six, check financial, legal and practical differences if you buy a new build construction. Most real estate agents correctly tell you that you pay VAT over a new construction purchase from a developer instead of the cheaper ITP transfer tax. However, what they often don't tell you is that in addition to the VAT, you also pay AGD or stamp duty over the registered value in the deeds. The total buyer costs are therefore quite a bit higher than for existing buildings. What you also need to know is that the developer is obliged to secure your paid amounts at the bank and has to finance the project itself through its own mortgages. This is to prevent the buyer from losing his money uh, if, for example, the company were to go bankrupt or if there would be an extreme delay. Your lawyer will check this bank guarantee, or in Spanish, aval. And he will also check the official penalty provisions in the private purchase contract in event of these delays, which of course are a very uh, important point of interest. Due to the current high demand for new build constructions on the Costa del Sol and in Andalusia in general, developers often are much more dominant than normal sellers. For example, they work with their own inflexible contracts as a standard and put a lot of pressure on the buyers at the end of construction for a quick completion. This in spite of the fact that the legal documents often aren't in order yet, so all risks would be transferred onto the buyer. Your lawyer will therefore always check the end of building certificate, the first occupation license, and the bulletin certificates for water and el electricity before the purchase deeds are signed. Another tip for new build constructions. Keep in mind that setting up new service contracts for water and electricity sometimes can even take up to eight weeks after completion. And you cannot rely on the well-intended promises of your developer that you can use construction, electricity or water. So don't plan your long desired holiday shortly after the transfer. Furthermore, costs such as the IBA property tax and especially the costs for the comunidad, the community of owners, cannot be predicted in advance because they simply have not been determined yet. Tip number seven. Be critical of black money deals or furniture tricks. Unfortunately, it's still a problem for some home buyers that they are put under pressure by the seller with black money deals in order to save his capital gain tax. Despite of the fact that you at the moment would save some ITP transfer tax, there are still a number of important disadvantages. Besides of being immoral and illegal, it's also quite impractical and unprofitable in the long run. You of course are not allowed to bring large amounts of cash by airplane, uh, you could be robbed and you are obliged to be present uh, at completion yourself in the notary because of course your lawyer cannot facilitate illegal practices. In addition, these 
black money deals are fortunately becoming less and less common in Spain. And if you ever want to sell again with a profit, you still have to pay this capital gain tax over the amount, uh, which is currently about 90% for EU uh, members, 24 for non-EU, and for fiscal residents, it's a flexible rate. Remember that you can always say no to the deal and if necessary, you can still offer to compensate the financial difference to the seller. To avoid capital gain tax, also some sellers propose an extreme high value for the furniture. This value will then be included in the purchase deeds, but does not count for the profit uh, over the property itself. And only 4% ITP transfer uh, tax will be charged over this declared value. However, the same disadvantage applies uh, that you may have to pay this capital gain tax yourself in future if you sell with a profit. And also you could receive an after assessment from the Spanish tax authorities. Nevertheless, you cannot refuse a separate amount for the furniture completely because then the seller can literally take everything, including the kitchen and the boiler. So just keep the amount reasonable. For example, a maximum of 10% of the purchase price. Tip number eight. Ask your lawyer about the community of owners and the urbanization. Spanish lawyers normally request a certificate from the community of owners to guarantee that the seller has no outstanding debts, but often they do not conduct further research into the community itself. This is quite a complicated and substantive theme, especially if there are debts or additional future expenses which already have been approved in the annual meeting. The content then ought to be looked at and in some cases the lawyer can negotiate that the seller pays for these costs. Therefore, ask your lawyer for the minutes of the annual meeting and if he can look where there are any specifics that you need to know before your purchase. It's also useful to receive the general regulations, for example, with the opening times of the swimming pool and if there are any potential restrictions regarding tourist rentals. The community and urbanization are two terms that are often mixed up. The urbanization, however, is a neighborhood on urban level according to the town hall. In new developed areas, it's normal for residents to jointly contribute to future development costs. As a result of this, the financial administration of the urbanization will not have been completed yet in that case. This, for example, can be for paving, for street lightning or for green zones. Sometimes this also applies for older neighborhoods and you can therefore still be faced with unpleasant financial surprises. This is one of the reasons why it's also wise to hire an experienced lawyer for urban properties because he needs to check this matter through the zoning plan of the town hall. Tip number nine, think about potential technical risks in terms of a structural survey, hidden defects and uh, home insurance. It's always possible to hire an architect to conduct a structural survey for your new property and uh, for an amount of 500 to 600 euros this certainly can't hurt you can ask him specific questions such as what could be the cost of these damp spots or do these cracks in the wall indicate an architectural problem however keep in mind that an architect cannot see into the walls nor under the ground or into the future it's therefore not an insurance policy. And if something turns out to be wrong afterwards, this of course does not mean that the architect is responsible for these costs. 
In Spain, by law, you can claim hidden defects up to six months after the purchase. But it's definitely not an easy procedure for several reasons. In any case, remember that uh, any lawsuit in Spain is a very expensive and time-consuming matter. So always make sure uh, that a thorough final check uh, is done on the property before you purchase the house. So if you're not in Spain yourself, you can instruct your real estate agent to do this on your behalf, sometimes even through a video meeting. Uh, he checks whether the furniture has been left according to the earlier agreements, if the house is clean and tidy, if there are no leaks, if the pool pump is working, and if the water and electricity contracts are still active. If something would not be right during this uh, final check, your lawyer always needs to be informed uh, so he can withhold money from the sales price uh, during the transfer as a compensation. It's also essential to request a quote for good home insurance before the signing at the notary that you can activate as soon as both signatures are placed. This is especially important in rural areas. Remember, if your house burns down, you will not get a permit for rebuilding it. And that's why you should always have a well covering home insurance. In addition, it's of course also wise to check your new home for fire and burglary safety, because you don't want any uninvited guests in your house while you're not there. Tip number 10. Are you a non-married couple or a Spanish resident owner? Then you will probably need a last will. After the transfer at the notary, your lawyer takes care of the correct registrations, the tax payments, uh, the transfer of the service contracts and setting up your new direct debits. You will have all original documentation and invoices in the final balance meeting a few months after completion, unless you have bought with a mortgage because then this is done by the bank. Keep these well together with the bank statements and also official invoices for value increasing renovations, as these are deductible from a potential future capital gain tax. Your lawyer will probably also check your situation in terms of future inheritance law. Are you a non-married couple or do you want to be resident in Spain? And do you, in addition, like most foreign buyers, want the longest living spouse or partner to inherit the house? Then you need to sign a, a Spanish will that designates the desires heir and also your national inheritance law to apply. Your lawyer will provide you with tailor-made advice on Spanish inheritance law and also inheritance tax. In Andalusia, for example, there is no inheritance tax between spouses and first degree relatives uh, such as children, parents and also grandparents. However, if you are not married and you want to avoid this quite high inheritance tax, up to 33% uh, for the survivor, then you also need to register officially uh, your partnership within Andalusia through the Registro de Pareja de Hecho. In addition, you will need a last will. Uh, the other option is uh, to get married which also immediately gives tax advantages in your own country if you have joint assets over there and you don't have your partnership registered yet. So these were my 10 legal tips for a safe property purchase in Spain, according to the current standards, laws and regulations. I also have a few personal recommendations for new homeowners. Just take a short moment of time to think about any potential environmental 
and especially water saving investments, especially if you have a garden or a swimming pool. In addition, your time in Spain will be so much more fun if you learn the language, and this is really very much appreciated by the Spaniards. In addition, of course, stay positive, even if you occasionally encounter some cultural differences or maybe some of the famous Spanish bureaucracy. As I said before, you can always ask me for a sample quote for all legal costs and taxes regarding a purchase in Andalusia or for a reference for a good real estate agent in this area. Also, you can find more detailed information on lifeinandalusia.com. If you could click the like button below, I would also appreciate it very much. Thank you for watching and very, very good luck in finding your dream home in Andalusia.